Okay, part two is focused on method execution, and here we're not going to be using any inheritance yet. And our key learning goal is that when we call a method on an object, we look in that object's class to find the code for the method. We'll start with an exercise, so you're going to pause here. I've got an example main method on the right-hand side, and then I've got two classes, a cat class and a tiger class. So I want you to try and trace through the example main method and figure out what it'll print. You should pause here and I'll keep going. So I've dropped the classes for now and I've just got the main method in the example two class. And I wanna talk you through how that create, those first two lines create the picture below. Okay, so here again, I'm in a main method. And so I'm creating a stack frame that keeps track of all the local variables. My next line starts off cat C. So that creates a variable with the type cat. And then the right hand side makes a new cat object, okay? And then that assignment statement, that will assign those. Next line, we've got tiger t, that makes a new variable named t with type tiger. The right hand side is gonna create that new tiger calling the tiger constructor. And then the assignment statement assigns that reference, that little remote control that I've got in there to point to that tiger. Okay, so the two lines there create kind of the picture that we've got below. And we're gonna keep working with that picture. Okay, now I've added the two classes back, the cat and the tiger class. So on the top, I've got the cat class. On the bottom, I've got the tiger class. Now I wanna trace through the code. So it says c.sleep. And remember, when we call a method on an object, we look in the object's class to find the code for that method. Okay, so C is an object of type or is referencing an object of type cat. So the object is a cat. And so we're gonna look in the cat code up at the top left for that method. And we do find a sleep method. So it prints those Zs. Okay, we finished executing the sleep method. So we're gonna go to C dot say hello. And when we call a method for, on an object, we look in the objects class to find the code for that method. Since we're calling this method on, on C, C references that cat object. So again, we're gonna look in the cat class. So here we look in the cat class and we look for the method say hello and we find it, prints per. Okay, we finished C dot say hello. Now we're gonna execute T dot swim. So T is referencing that tiger. So we're gonna look in the tiger class to find the code for that method. So we look in the tiger class over on the left and we find the swim method there. And it says splish splash, splash splash, sorry. Okay, so now we've finished executing t.swim, so we're gonna execute t.say hello. t references that tiger on the bottom right, so because we're calling the method on the tiger, we're look at, gonna look in the tiger's class for that code. We look in the tiger's class, we find it in this, the say hello method inside the tiger's class, and it prints roar. All right, we've finished executing t.say hello, so we'll execute t.sleep. Again, we're calling uh, sleep on the on t, which is referencing this tiger. So that object, because it's a tiger, we're gonna look in the tiger class for that code, and we find it, we've got the sleep method there. Okay, so our key piece here was that when we call a method on an object, we look in that object's class to find the code for the method. And before we go on, I want you to notice that cat and tiger objects had some shared and some different behavior. So I've got them side by side now, and you can see that the sleep method was identical for the two of them. The say hello methods were different. So a cat said purr and the tiger said roar. And then we added an additional method, or we had an additional method in the tiger class that had the swim method. And most importantly, I want to draw your attention to the fact that they had identical code for their sleep method. And our next step will to be to use inheritance to avoid some of this duplicated code. You'll find that in part three.